All right, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be here with Dr. Mark Kripe and Dr. Deepahala Harvey, both amazing breast surgeons here in Columbus, Ohio. And today, you're welcome. (laughs) I mean it. We're going to be talking about aesthetic flat closure. Now, when I was first diagnosed with breast cancer, I didn't even know what that word meant, but we're here to talk about it today to provide some clarity, talk about it as it being an option. So let's just get started. What is this aesthetic flat closure? I grew up back in the day. No. Um, so I grew up just doing a mastectomy. Okay. And you're just removing the breast. And lots of times you'd see the surgeons just say, okay, I'm here to take out the cancer. And I take off the breast and there'd be ridges at the top, a ridge along the fold. There might be some extra tissue in the armpit. They call the side boob, but the breast is gone. It's not pulling it forward. And then it, it rubs, it folds over the bra and prosthesis, their arm hits it. Nobody likes it. So I've always tried to diminish some of that, those issues, those mm-hmm. extra folds, and now it has a cool name. It's called aesthetic flat closure, and that's the fancy term for it, which in my residency and fellowship, uh, working with Dr. Kripe, that's all we did, so I didn't know any mm-hmm. different. But the good thing is for these women who don't want any extra additional skin, they don't want reconstruction, they just want to be flat. In fact, mm-hmm. some women will come and say, I never wanted these breasts. Mm-hmm. And right. and I have a lot of women who've gone, undergone aesthetic flat closure are super happy with themselves. They just sort of kind of feel free, whether they're in sports or doing other things. If they had large breasts and mm-hmm. get in the way, they're super happy with mm-hmm. it. So. so it sounds like you were doing mastectomies. This is still considered a mastectomy. Right. But the difference is, is that you're kind of making it look a bit nicer cleaner no lumps no bumps as much as possible does that sound right yeah i think that's good yeah i think that's what we do you know for us women we tend to have tissue underneath her arms sometimes in the middle um, on our on our bone or sternal bone we call it and if you don't remove that tissue and you just do a mastectomy that can really cause pain discomfort Mm -hmm. it's really tough to find prosthesis that actually fits those skin folds Mm -hmm. so we basically contour the body to where there is no excess skin so for these women when they go to put on a prosthesis it's great it fits fine if they don't want to wear a prosthesis and just wear a Mm -hmm. t-shirt they're still happy with it so and i will also say it's not gonna be perfectly flat. We're not perfectly flat. Right. We're round. Right. And we have ribs and we have muscle. And so it can never be flat. I think the goal is kind of the mindset of just cutting out the cancer and leaving everything else and say, well, I, I cured your cancer. I did my job. Yeah. And I, I think that's unfortunate because <laughs> right. then you're left with, okay, what do I do with this extra tissue and how's it fold over? And if I wear a bra and prosthesis, where does it go? And it, like you said, it hurts. And so it's trying to be more mindful of that. And I think the less body fat you have, the more flat you're gonna get. If you have excess tissue, you're going to have a little bit more lumpy kind of areas, but we try to minimize that and really decrease that a number of different ways. So something called a VY advancement flap is probably what we use most, where you take that excess tissue, cut out some of it, and then kind of pull it forward or medially to try to minimize that armpit tissue. Yeah, and sometimes we do what we call an angel wing, where basically mm-hmm. remove the incision or the scar is going to go up underneath the arm. And this is for those women, again, who have a lot of tissue underneath the arm. Okay. Now, is this something that all breast surgeons do, this aesthetic flat closure, or does this fall into like the plastic surgeon realm? We do it ourselves. Like, so we remove the breast tissue mm-hmm. and do the aesthetic flat closure ourselves. Mm-hmm. From what I understand, most of the breast surgeons across the country utilize the help of a plastic surgeon to do the flat closure. What it does for me personally is I don't have to wait for the plastic surgeon to schedule the surgery together, which Mm -hmm. sometimes can delay surgeries because both of our schedules are tough to find. But us doing it together and we do our double mastectomies together, uh, it really cuts down time and anesthesia for the patient, but also we're not involving a third surgeon to do the closure. And I think the other thing is if you've already had a mastectomy and you have some of this extra tissue or throughout the last 20, 30 years, your body changes, Mm -hmm. you could go see probably more the plastic surgeon I would think of, but sometimes your breast surgeon and talk to them about removing some of that excess tissue. So it's, if you haven't had this done, you're not kind of out. No, I'm sorry, but no, you can still talk to a plastic surgeon or your breast surgeon, but hopefully more and more breast surgeons, and that's why we have a fellowship, Mm -hmm. hopefully breast surgeons come out performing this, thinking of that outcome for patients and quality of life rather than the old mindset of, well, I I cut out the cancer and that's it. Right. So I feel like this would be a good question to ask your breast surgeon. Like, 
Yeah. Can you do aesthetic black closure? Can you even show me some pictures? Yeah. So that yeah. depending on your weight, if you're on the smaller side or you have the excess skin, you would know what to expect. Does that sound right? Totally agree. Okay. Now yep. we've talked about in previous podcasts about the fellowship program where you have a general surgeon, there are general surgeons, what they do, and then they do the breast fellowship where they're actually learning more about the breast. So would a general surgeon typically know how to do aesthetic flat closure? Training varies from okay. institution to institution. And then you have a general surgeon that perhaps if they trained before a lot of the fellowships, they didn't have that opportunity, but if they care a lot and they go to the conferences and they talk to their plastic surgeon, they can learn those techniques. So okay. I think that'd be tough to generalize to say, oh, yeah. you're going to get it or not get it. It's mm. just depends how much do you care? How much do you want to do it? How much do you want to improve? And then the ongoing learning, I mean, it's really different, I think, for every surgeon, honestly. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things that are changing in the breast world. I think it is tough to keep up with thyroid and pancreas and liver and gallbladder and 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 we are only keep i mean i'm only keeping up with the breast part because i'm breast surgeon dr Kripe is also a melanoma surgeon so right. he just went to a conference to learn about both of those things but if a general surgeon wants to do this they can absolutely do it as long as they're doing a lot of those surgeries mm -hmm. and they have good training and they're keeping up to date and going to conferences okay so if yeah. someone doesn't feel comfortable doing it, a breast surgeon or general surgeon they're just, they're going to give this to the plastic surgeon, which may, may or may not be another surgery, possibly. Maybe the plastic surgeon, like you said, Dr. Hala Harvey, would have to coordinate the timing with yes. you. Yeah. But what I, what I really hear is that you care enough hmm. as surgeons. I'm not saying other surgeons don't, because I don't know. I have experience with you two, but you care enough about the outcome and how the patient is going to feel versus hmm. just the technical piece of cutting out the cancer. Yep. I, totally agree I have with always that. said anyone can be a surgeon, right? I mean, all you do is take a knife and whatever the body. Hey, not anyone. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Just you go to medical school and you know, residency, <laughs> and lots of years of that, but. Um, I think it, what makes a good surgeon is not just being able to remove the part of the body mm -hmm. that they are trained to do, but also look, thinking of the patient as a whole mm -hmm. and helping them through the process. It all starts with listening to the patient first, right? So mm -hmm. understanding what the patient wants. Does the patient want aesthetic flat closure? Does she want reconstruction? And sometimes women don't know, and I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's honoring what the woman wants when they first come to see you, I think is the most important thing. I will say as being a, a breast cancer patient, Dr. Kripe was my physician, you're like, you feel like you got hit by a truck and you're mm. not thinking clearly at that time. So you may not know whether you want aesthetic flat closure, you want reconstruction. So you always have an option of going back to aesthetic flat closure if you decide that you wanted reconstruction initially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think as physicians, it's our job to listen to the woman. And this is something the woman has to live rest of her life, right? She's looking at herself in the mirror every right. single day. And hopefully these scars are not a reminder of how bad her journey was. And it's just one chapter of her life, not the entire, you know, entire book is kind of what I say. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is when I was in training, this wasn't a thing. Mm. You just did the mastectomy mm -hmm. and how you closed it, how you didn't close. Like we didn't really talk about that. We just talked about removing the cancer, removing right. the breast. And then I was out only a few years and someone came to me who another surgeon had performed a mastectomy and kind of went a little further to the outside and thin some tissue. I'm like, well, I can do better than that. Mm. You know? And then also if you're out in practice, a lot of the stuff we do in residency is really the surgery. Everybody wants to be in the surgery yeah. and you're not in the office. Mm -hmm. When you're in the office and you see the patient back post-operatively, that's when a lot of people are like, okay, we're done. We're turning you over to the PA or the mm -hmm. NP or whatever. When I was in practice the first 10 years, I think, I didn't have any advanced practitioner. And so I'm seeing all my own post-ops two years, three years, 10 years. And I might look at that and say, oh man, I didn't like that. I left that extra tissue. That made me change what I did the next day in the OR. Yeah. So the longer you've been out and seeing that, the changes that I would notice in those mm -hmm. patients, and I'm a perfectionist, my grandmother was an artist. And so I call it the ultimate body art. You don't get to go back. You can do some redos, but your canvas is a little bit yeah. irregular. It's a little bit curved. There's ribs. And so it's that perfection. And then also looking at the patient to say, I don't like this hurts. Mm. It folds over when I put mm -hmm. on a bra and prosthesis. I don't like it. And so that's when I started to say, okay, we can do better than that. Yeah. And then pushing the envelope. And now with Dr. Hala Harvey, and now there's the word out there, aesthetic fat cl flat closure. I think it's a great thing that more women need to know about. And like you said, ask your surgeon, do you yeah. do this? So 
Should every surgeon offer this as an option? I think so, yes. yes. I mean, yeah. because it's becoming a word now. There's yeah. even, like, groups that are forming for yeah. aesthetic flat closure yeah. to bring awareness around it. So maybe back in the day it was always like, oh, yeah, you're going to get reconstruction. You're going to get implants. Yeah. And then we have deep. And now um, I feel like this should be mentioned by your breast surgeon as an option. Yeah, I think it should be when you were, whenever you have a discussion with the patient, you should mention all the different options, including a lumpectomy if they're a candidate. Mm-hmm. If it's a mastectomy, what type of mastectomy? And they need to go in through the details of the different types of mastectomies with or without reconstruction. And without reconstruction should definitely be, you know, talk to the patient. And the patient ultimately, dis- you know, it's a shared decision making where we're helping the patient right. make the decision. Back in the day, I think as physicians, we told the patient what to do. Not anymore. It right. should be about yeah, we want that shared voice. decision making. You know, yeah. we want to be seen by our surgeons, by our plastic surgeons, by our oncologists. Like, see me for who I am. I don't want to mm-hmm. just be someone that's yeah. on the table again. That You know, and I get yeah. you do this every day, but it's like when you see me and know that I want to like how I look, mm-hmm. even though I'm going through a really hard thing, and if I have to be the aesthetic flat closure, okay, but I want to like it when yeah. I look in the mirror. And I think that's where that caring piece comes about. Mm-hmm. I care about what you're going to look like 10 years from now. Yeah. And I, I love that about you both. Yeah. The other thing is, knowledge that's why we're doing this mm-hmm. podcast that's why we're doing the youtube video mm-hmm. that's people don't know right like again patient gets diagnosed with a cancer and like oh my gosh cut it out and cut it out yesterday mm-hmm. i don't want it just do whatever and like well you say that now but let's think five years 10 years 20 years down the road what's it going to look like what are you going to feel like and so i think it's our job to help teach people and talk yeah. to people but also as a breast cancer patient then learning what are all these different words and talking to your surgeon and making sure that you all feel comfortable yep. together on what are your goals as a patient rather than just what are my goals as a surgeon because I just want to cut out the cancer. I want yeah. it gone. Right. But yet I do want you to have a great quality of life afterward. What are your goals as the patient? Mm-hmm. I love that. This was so helpful. Thank you for yeah. providing some clarity yeah. on aesthetic flat closure and also mentioning it with your patients and offering to do it as well yeah. with surgery. So thank you so much, yes, Monica. Thank you, thank Monica. you. All right. Well, that's it for today. And stay tuned because we have another episode coming up on Goldilocks mastectomies. We're super pumped about it. So stay tuned. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.